Good morning, Harvard's Revival Center. I bring greetings from Joe Baru, and uh, it is so wonderful to see each one of you online. Special greetings to both the pastors. I like to pray with you before we uh, start today's message. In the course of praying, I like to release a word, a prophetic word for the pastor, Dr. Bernard, also uh, Dr. Blaze, and a word for the church. Now, if you're reading, let's stand to our feet and let's just commit the rest of the time into God's hand. Father, we thank you for this church, Harvest Revival Center. And uh, Lord, they have gone through both thick and thin. You have preserved them. And we pray as they persevere. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Bless the church. Bless the ministries of the church, dear Father. That they will lack nothing, dear Father. Thank you. Thank you for the financial freedom. Thank you that you enable them to have their building, dear Father. Lead them. And continue to watch over them. I'd like to release a word over Dr. Bernard. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you. Dr. Bernard, the pastor of the church. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you. Stay focused. Do not be discouraged. Do not be distracted. And you will walk in the fear of the Lord. As in Proverbs 14, 26 and 27, the scriptures clearly tells us that there is confidence in the fear of God and that you will find a refuge in the fear of God. And this fear of God will be a fountain of life to you and it will keep you away from the snare of the enemy. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you. I, the Lord, have set you as a man of missions. And I've started this work and I've not finished yet. As in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, he who has started a good work in you will finish it in the days of the Lord. Therefore, be strong. Therefore, be bold. Therefore, be immovable. And for you, Dr. Blaze, the second pastor, you're a woman of integrity and you're a woman of the word. Proverbs 21, 22 verse 1. You are known to be a woman who will speak the word and keep the word. And you're also a woman who has got an anointing and wisdom and counsel to divide the word as in Psalms 119 verses 17 and 18. For the Lord thy God will deal with you bountifully and the Lord will open your eyes to see the wondrous things in his word. You will be a disciple maker. You will be one who will put people in a stronger foundation in the word. Therefore, arise in your anointing to teach. And for the church, the word that God has for the church is this. I, the Lord, have placed my helping hand upon you. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you as in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 2 and 3. Uh, when you pass through the water, I'll be with you. And through the river, they shall not overflow. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And I will preserve you, says the Lord. For this day, the helping hand of God is upon you for everyone who's watching. And if you feel helpless and hopeless and you 
you need some kind of help, the Lord would say this, my hand is upon you, says the Lord. Father, I commit both the pastors and their works into your hands, the leaders of the church and the entire church. God, lead them. You told me clearly, your helping hand is upon them. Bless them, dear Father, in this uncertain time, in this time of anxiety, in the time of fear, in this time of famine of finance. Your hand will be upon each one of them. Thank you, Lord. You are a faithful God. We commit everyone into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like you to turn with me to Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 11. And I'm going to read from two versions. I'm going to read from New King James Version, and I'm also going to read from the, uh, the Passion Translation. And I want to bring out the message that God has for you today. Now, Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 11, not lagging in diligence, not lagging in diligence, and uh, fervent in the Spirit, serving the Lord. I like to zero into the word fervent in the Spirit, right? And then uh, let, let me read uh, the, uh, the Passion Translation. The Passion, Passion Translation says this, Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. Keep your passion toward Him boiling hot Radiate with the glow, right? I like the word. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let Him fill you with excitement as you serve Him. Now, I like the word radiate in, with the glow of the Holy Spirit. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit. It's like um, Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. Arise, shine, for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. The glory of the Spirit of God has risen upon thee. Though darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness over the people, but the Lord will arise over you. In other words, radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit. So therefore, in line with the, this scripture, I like to entitle this morning's message in this uncertain time, embracing, embracing the fullness of the Holy Spirit, embracing the fullness of the Holy Spirit or the river of God. I'm a firm believer when the fullness of God is found, uh, the fullness of God's presence is found in the family or in the church, everything will fall in the right place. It is like um, Zechariah, the fourth chapter was six, not by might, no by power, but by my spirit. And the spirit of God, you know, will put everything in order. You know, and uh, for this embracing the fullness of the of the Spirit of God or the river of God, I like you to turn with me to Ezekiel the forty seventh chapter, and I like to read verse nine. And before we read verse nine, and let me just give you a background from verses one to eight. This talks about the river of God that flows from the sanctuary and there it flows into, into the confession of Ezekiel and it goes on to say the river then it goes on to say the river from the ankle it rises up to the knee and from the knee to the waist and to the overflowing. You know, talks about the river of God overflowing us, drowning us, and soaking us, and saturating us in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And now let me just read verse 9. How can this river uh, be, be relevant? How can this river be relevant to us, especially when the whole world is faced with hopelessness? Look at India, look at Myanmar, look at Singapore with the variants. You know, the, the, the COVID-19 has mutated into new strain from South Africa, from India and different parts of the world. And uh, look at Malaysia, uh, our numbers keep going up, and uh, from M 
MCO1 uh, to RMCO, CMCO, MCO2, MCO3, don't know what else. In this, in this difficult time, in this stressful time, if there is one thing that we need uh, that, that would help us to live an effective Christian life without losing out in the plan and the purposes of God is going to be the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be the river of God. Look at verse 9. It says, verse 9, and it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river go, will live. Wherever the river go, first of all, the river makes us a living thing. And then from us, wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a great multitude of fish because these waters go there. Because this water goes there, for they will be healed. There will be production. There will be, there'll be fruitfulness. There will be healing. And everything will, will live where the river goes. Sometimes back when the Orang Aslis got saved, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And very uniquely, these guys were filled with the maximum presence of God. And God healed their water. They got Fishes more than what they used to have before. God healed the swamp. They brought in crabs more than before. God healed the jungle. They brought wild boars more than before. And this river began to flow and heal. And the purpose of this message, the primary purpose of this message is to show you how this river can be relevant to you and from you become relevant to others. That's the purpose of this message. Hallelujah. For a time such as this, we must continue to be steadfast. We must be continue to be immovable. We must continue to abound in the work of the Lord. Don't be discouraged over this pandemic or be discouraged over what has happened in the church in the past. We need to rise up. You know, you know say, uh, um, revival, harvest, uh, harvest revival center. We need to rise up. You have a call. You have a purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and uh, now let's look at the, the, the two important relevance of this rev river. First of all, how relevant is this river to us today for a time such as this. I'd like you to turn your attention to John the seventh chapter. John the seventh chapter was 37 to 39. 37 to 39. And here Jesus speaks prophetically of the river that's within us. And Jesus said, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and he said this, if anyone thirsts, I want more of you, God. This morning, I prayed for a 76-old gentleman, Mr. Tan, uh, Tan Tian Pao. And he said, Pastor, I'm hungry for God. I'm thirsty for God. Can you imagine? He's a former contractor who was possessed with all kinds of spirit. And this morning, when I prayed for him, you know, he said, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, Lord. And if you're hungry, there, this is for you. Let him come to me and drink. What is this? This is the drink of the Holy Spirit. And he went on to say, he, and uh, about 30, 38, he went on and said, um, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And then he said, uh, he spoke this concerning the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And the location of the river after you have received Jesus as your personal Savior, the river is no longer in Jerusalem, is no longer in some sanctuary. The river is right inside of you. That river, the river of God, is right inside of you. And all those who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have a, a, a powerful measure of this river inside. And, and as, as this river begins to flow inside of you, number one, it brings times of refreshing. It brings times of refreshing. 
how to let the river flow i'll tell you later but this river within you this well within you brings times of refreshing as you commune with god as you read the word and as you walk in faith it brings times of refreshing today those of you are watching this message where do you need times of refreshing that word times of refreshing means times of renewal times of revival times of, of repentance at times of redirection at times of even relocation acts chapter 3 verse 19 peter says repent and be converted the times of refreshing can come from the presence of god and you are the carrier of the presence of God. That's what happens. The river is for you to be refreshed. That river is for you to be renewed. That river is for you to be revived. By faith, you need to believe that the river was within you and start praying and start believing and this river will begin to bring times of refreshing. Not only that, that river inside of you is supposed to bring shouts of joy. Shouts of joy and the favor of God. In the favor of God. Hallelujah. You know, uh, we read in Psalm 16 and verse 11. Psalm 16 and verse 11. Where it says, uh, Psalm 16 and verse 11. Look at that. You will show me the path of life. And we have the salvation. And it goes on to say, in your presence is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. And at your right hand, a pleasure for a more. Some version would say favor. And that's the river that's within you. So therefore, therefore, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Know ye not that you are the river of God. Know ye not that you are the, the fountain of God. Know ye not that you are the well of God. Remember, Paul, uh, Jesus said in John, the fourth chapter, verse 14, he looked at the Samaritan woman and said, he said, he who drinks of this water that I would give, he said, that water that you drink will become a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. In everlasting life, that's right. And that river is not some dormant river. It's not some stagnant river. That river is a river that's flowing within you and into you and bringing forth the, the times of refreshing and times of joy and times of favor. We also read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse, verse 17 where the presence of God is, there is liberty. And I want to say this to you. That's why we declare prophetically that you are highly favored. You are highly favored. You are a woman and man of a glad heart and you are highly blessed and you are highly, wonderfully accepted by God. Hallelujah. Why? Because the river inside of you is a functional river. It's not a river that is stagnant. And hallelujah, glory to God. So rise to the occasion and believe that the river will begin to flow into your life as a fountain of life first. Glory to God. Bringing times of liberty and freedom. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, somebody say amen, please. So therefore, you are a treasure poured of God. And because of the fountain and the river that's in you, you are blessed, and you are healed, you are restored, and you are set free. Number two, the second reason the, the river that's in you is not only for you. See, we, we read, uh, let me just read Ezekiel 47, 9. And this is very crucial. It says, and it shall be that every living thing that moves, every living thing that moves, Wherever the river flows, you know, friends, that river inside of you is not only a river that will benefit you, but the river has ability to flow out of you. Flow out of you. And it said, like wherever the river goes will live. There will be a, a great multitude of fish because this water goes them 
for they, wherever the water goes, they, for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. Praise God. You know, and that river inside of you, when you begin to enjoy the benefits of the river, and the river is so full and overflowing, when you begin to, to minister to others, when you begin to share your testimony, when you begin to pray for others, that river has a capacity to flow out and minister to others. The fountain of the living water. And it's able to minister to others. And, I, and that's, that's number two. Don't keep the river to yourself. The river is not just meant for you. The river is also meant for others. Remember Jesus said in John the 4th chapter verse 34 and 35. Jesus said, my food is, is, is to do the will of the Father who sent me and finish it. And he said in verse 35, lift up your eyes and see. Do not say, yet four more months then come harvest. Lift up your eyes and see. It, uh, it is harvest time. The harvest is already white for harvest. It's already ripe for harvest. And that river cannot be selfishly your river. You cannot keep that river inside and say, it is my river. A river of blessing, a river of breakthrough, a river of joy, a river of the favor of God, a river of freedom. But this river has to flow out and become a blessing to others. This river must come to a place of evangelism. We need to come to a place where we need to win the laws. We need to look at people, no longer as people, but souls that are going to hell. And this river will come in handy for you when you begin to release the river. Towards the end of the service, I'll tell you how. I'd like to share with you a testimony how my river inside of me is not selfish. About a month ago, these two doctors were praying for a boy and they were conceived. Of course, the, the doctor conceived. Husband is a doctor too. And uh, they gave birth to a beautiful son. They already were two girls. They wanted a boy. We prayed for a boy. The boy is a beautiful, handsome guy. And uh, while they were waiting to be discharged, the gynae comes and tells the mother and the father, the boy is deaf. He has zero hearing. It was so disappointed, the whole world collapsed. And they called me, and they were going home, they called me. And I said, please, don't be discouraged. I said, your, if your son's ears is not formed in the womb, God's going to form it. Let's trust God. I told them, bring the child for dedication. And I think two or three weeks later, they brought the child. We are still in MCO time. So I prayed for both the father and mother. They were so discouraged. And I laid my hands on this tiny ears. And I commanded the ear to be open, to be formed. And the Holy Spirit told me that I'm forming the ear. See, my river inside of me is flowing out. As a miracle working river. Wherever the river goes, it brings healing. And the father testified as soon as they got into the car. And the music, the child began to respond to sound. You know. And three weeks later, they went to the audiologist. And this lady checked the ears and said, Your son has got 100% hearing in both the ears. See what the river can do? Don't keep the river selfishly inside. You have to bring the river out. And uh, last Sunday, a lady sends me a message from Kota Kinabalu. And she tells me, this all New Testament is, Pastor, we want you to pray for us. Can I call you? I said, I gave her a time. She called me. And then she said, my husband is with me. Can I video call you? I said, sure, you can video call me. A video called me and they gave me some reasons why they want to be prayed for. They're from a mainline church. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Those who don't believe in the Holy Spirit, I don't know what their life is going to be. I'm not very sure. You know, I feel sad for them. You know, really sad. You know, and I hope you are not the kind of a dude who don't believe in the Holy Spirit. And you know what, friends? 
And uh, I started ministering and she started screaming. I tell you, started vomiting the husband who is a Taoist. And he goes and told the husband he was my helper. My assistant pastor was a Taoist at that time. You know, told him to go and bring something. She's coughing out, vomiting and breathing in pain, holding her stomach. She was set free. And she was also healed of a chronic back condition because of a, a heel. You know, heel, the, the space between the heel, one is higher, the other one is lower. And she was walking unevenly. God did a miracle. And then she sends me a message two hours later and said, Pastor, I've never experienced such a breakthrough. And you know what? They, they are, that driver flew out in authority and in the gift of discernment to touch others. You know, and, and as I conclude this message, you know, as I conclude this message, you know, friends, allow the river to flow. If you want that river to be alive and active for your use, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. And the scriptures are very clear. He who, Paul says, he who speaks in tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. The word edify means to build up. So friends, you need to speak in tongues, not praying in tongues. Speak in tongues. As, as you speak in tongues, this river will become relevant to you first. Speak in tongues. Who reta sutta, reta shutta, reta sutta. Speak in tongues, not praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is a prayer responsibility. Speaking in tongues is a conversation. You speak in tongues at all times. While you're driving, now it is so easy. We're wearing masks everywhere. When you're speaking in tongues, nobody will know. Speak in tongues. Now, that, you know what happens? That river, that river inside of you begins to flow as a river of favor, as a river of joy, as a river of freedom, as a river of, of, of healing. It begins to flow inside of you. That you get healed. It's an inside activity. You know, the more you speak, the river begins to flow. He's, remember John the seventh chapter verse 36 I sp he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit in the last day uh, the, the last day of this feast he said he who believes in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water and uh, how do you allow the river to flow inside how do you by speaking in tongues speaking in tongues if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit let me pray for you and then uh, and how do you allow the river to flow out you know and we read in 1 Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4, you know, and uh, verse 11, this is what it says. If anyone speaks, if anyone speaks, look at that. You know, speak means minister. You know, while I'm, I'm speaking, I'm releasing the river of God. Some of you may feel the presence of God. Some of you may just feel the presence of your family members next to you. But as I'm preaching, the river flows out of me. As I speak, as I witness, as I witness, as I begin to testify, the river. He who speaks, let him speak as the oracle of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies. That in all in things, God may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen, please? Are you here with me? So, the river within you when you speak in tongues, the river without you when you begin to minister to others. Father, I just pray for everyone who's watching this message. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, give them the wisdom to speak in tongues. As they speak in tongues, let the river begin to flow. It's an internal flow in your favor as in Psalm 16 verse 11. Oh God, as in Acts chapter 3 verse 19, times of refreshing, times of rest, times of renewal, edify. Edify means to be built, times of freedom. And as they begin to minister as the ambassador of Christ, as they go out to bring the good news, let the river flow out and touch others, dear Father. Wherever the river flows, Lord, there will be healing, there will be restoration, dear Father. I just commit them, those who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll pour your spirit upon them right now. Those that are sick, let your healing power begin to flow from joint to joint, from muscle to muscle, from nerve to nerve. I just minister your healing. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you. In the days to come, I, the Lord, will be bald 
Perzim, Perzim, Baal, Perzim. In 2, Corinth, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 20. I will be the God of breakthroughs. I'll, I'll show myself um, as Paul Perzim. Uh, Perzim means uh, the master of breakthrough. I, the Lord, will bring breakthroughs to you, says the Lord. Father, I just commit uh, each one of them uh, into your hands. Uh, Father, I pray those that are sick, you are healed. Those that need to be set free, you are free. Those that need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, by faith, begin to lift up your hands and begin to praise God, Lord. Fill them, Lord. Kureta sata, shata rata, sata rata, sata, shadaraba, shadaraba, sanda. Let your anointing flow in the name of Jesus. Preserve every one of them in a, a revival, a harvest revival center. I lift up the shield of faith upon each one of them and their families as in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 that the fiery darts of the enemy will not prevail against them dear father protect them watch over them those who are overseas to their loved ones we thank you in Jesus name we pray and everybody said amen thank you Dr. Bernard Leaders for giving me this opportunity to, to preach the gospel I pray the rivers of God will begin to pray uh, begin to flow and uh, your family and the church too. God bless you. With this, the service is over.